Um, I also see a question here. It's from Lisa. It says, There are many times when I react to the world almost like a reflex. <laughs> it feels automatic. It is participating in the script, but feels out of my control. Can you talk about how to interpret, how to interrupt knee-jerk reactions to situations? Um, yeah, I can talk about my experience. Um, first of all, when we're still in the phase when it happens so fast that it feels automatic, at that point there may not be anything that we can do to interrupt it, as you say. But um, what we can do is look at it after the fact. I used to spend a lot of time taking timeouts, looking at the fact that I had just yelled at Jasmine again. Um, and what I would do after the fact is I would look at it. Now, usually I also had to spend a lot of time letting go of guilt because I felt guilty for having had the knee-jerk reaction, as you say. But at some point, um, after letting go of guilt and letting go of guilt, I got to where I could look at what I had done without judgment, as if I just wanted to learn from myself. And I could look at what really upset me. And you've probably heard this story before. I know that one of the key thoughts that I noticed is that whenever I had the thought that Jasmine was not respecting me, I got very, very upset. So I started to notice that that thought came into my mind and that that thought is what I was reacting to. More than her, I was reacting to the idea in my mind that she did not respect me. After that, after I caught the thought, and again I was looking at it after it happened, then what would start to happen is I would start noticing the thought in my mind before the yelling occurred. And that's when I got to where I could interrupt it. So I actually went through a process first. It didn't happen automatically. First there was a process of letting go of my own judgment of what I had done. Then there was the process of being able to look from the observer role at what had actually happened. And then, once I became aware of that thought, she's not respecting me, then I could see that thought when it was rising in my mind, and I could choose again before I followed through by yelling at her. <laughs> so, and that, and I will tell you, that actually, that process, the one I'm describing to you now, took many months. And one thing that was happening the entire time I was going through that process is I was giving my willingness over and over and over again, you know, to to be healed of whatever needed to be healed. So giving willingness was very important. Uh, sticking with the process, uh, continuing to take responsibility for how I felt, never blaming it on someone else, and continuing to look within for what was going on in me that was causing the upset. Lisa, I am uh, turning, Lisa Trevino, I am turning the mic over to you. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to add one thing. My process is exactly the same. And one of the things that came up for me, though, when I would be going through this process was, in my experience, was I would have tons of shame. And so I would feel so bad about. It's like I had a story about when I would react. I would have a story about when I would lash out or say something or snap or get angry or my blood pressure would go up or whatever. I would have a story about it. And it wasn't helpful. And so the first thing that the Holy Spirit needed to keep uh, help me to keep in mind was to not have a story about it, to just, uh, to just really see that I was healing and that whatever it is that I was believing was driving it. And it was helpful because I was able to slow down and instead of going, because I would go into, I would have the thought, and it would happen so fast, and then I would react, and then I would judge myself about how I reacted, and then I would be all about trying to control the action, the doing. And it was all coming from a place of shame or judgment or fear of what somebody else was going to think of me because I just reacted like that. And when I let go of the judgment of it, I was able to slow down and be close enough to what had just recently transpired to be able to start listening and hear because now it's fresh in my mind. I haven't gone into the story about it but stayed in the story of it to be able to ask, well, what was I thinking? And be able to hear, well, what was the fear? And it's always a fear. Like, I'm afraid something's going to happen or afraid this person, this is what this really means or something. Like, there's a fear that drives that, that propels it with such energy. It's, that's why we're never upset for the reason we think. But when I would go into the story about it, 
I, I promise you, I would miss the boat. I wouldn't even hear what it was that I was thinking because now I was all about controlling. You know, now it was all about really in, in a major defense and I don't, now I have a fear about a fear or a shame about shame. I just didn't want anybody to see me acting like that or I didn't want to judge myself that way and I was judging myself. And so to really see that it's part of the process of healing gives us a chance to stop, slow down already and start loving ourselves in the process and realize that, wow, okay, you know, we're not a bad person because we just snapped or something just came up. Something just came up for healing. And in that, we can then, this is a, a, an opening up that happens where I'm able to then hear gently what it was that I was thinking instead of, instead of judging it, um, where it would run and hide in the corner of my mind going, don't look at me. <laughs> anyway, that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is um, return to the message. I'll read the last paragraph again just to get us back into it. 